All right, so let's do some more about the, the wind bells that we have been looking at. Uh, I already mentioned these, so we have the very weak winds wherever the winds converge because if you have winds coming from two directions, they have to go to zero when they meet up and then they go up, right? So you have the doldrums. We haven't exactly defined the intertropical convergence zone yet, but we will do that. Turns out to be a very fascinating feature as well, especially when we uh, uh, reach the monsoons a little bit later on. And we had the horse latitudes that I explained, uh, the place where the, the winds sink, and again, uh, there is a divergence, which means, again, if the winds are going away from this place, that means there is zero in the middle. And the polar fronts at 40 degrees latitude, where the polar easterlies and the mid-latitude prevailing westerlies meet. Okay? So these are the characteristics of the wind belts and their boundaries, equator to about uh, 5 degrees latitude, you have uh, doldrums, atmospheric pressure is low, that's where temperatures are warm, they are rising, light variable winds, abundant cloudiness, much precipitation, breeding ground for hurricanes. We will look at that later. Wherever you have a lot of convection and warm temperatures, you have these seeds of rotation being put down by the atmosphere, and based on various conditions that are favorable for cyclones, uh, cyclogenesis happens, and that's what is uh, mentioned here by saying breeding ground. Uh, between 5 degrees latitude to 30 degrees, you have the trade winds on either side, strong, steady winds, generally from the east, so you have the northeast and southeast trade winds, you have the horse latitude at uh, 30 degrees again, uh, light and variable winds here, you have uh, dry, clear, fair weather because of the sinking air and high pressure. <coughs> And little precipitation, this is where major deserts uh, of the world occur. As it turns out, India is actually uh, at that latitude, right? We are in the tropics, uh, the Himalayas are uh, at about uh, 30 north, but we have abundant monsoons. So because of this configuration of Indian subcontinent coming so close to the uh, equator in warm ocean and the Himalayas, we actually end up having monsoons instead of being like the Middle East uh, on the uh, west, which is a, a desert. 30 to 60 degrees, we have the prevailing westerlies, the strong winds, they actually are associated with the so-called storm tracts, uh, and they bring storms that actually affect uh, Europe and the United States uh, a lot more. Uh, we are obviously shielded from uh, uh, the north by the Himalayas, uh, but once in a while we get some influence through the northwest corner uh, called westerly disturbances which are kind of related to the prevailing westerlies. Uh, you have the polar front at 60 degrees north which again is a low pressure area with variable winds, stormy, cloudy weather year round. The dynamics of what produces precipitation at those latitudes is very different than uh, the precipitation that's produced in low latitude, low pressure, warm temperature regions, okay? We'll maybe talk about that a little bit later. Uh, you have the polar easterlies. These are cold, dry winds generally from the east. Uh, when, you, when, they s we, when we typically say variable, that means uh, they are not steady like the trade winds or the westerlies, okay? At the poles, you have variable winds, again, not very steady clear, dry, fair conditions, cold temperatures, and minimal precipitation and cold deserts. What does that mean? At the poles, you may have sea ice or glacier, but precipitation or snowfall is very, very, very small. Why? Because the air is very dry. Dry air has hardly any moisture, so it doesn't precipitate very much. There will be very little snow, let alone rain, okay? So let's look at this uh, uh, wind map again. Uh, you have these pressure centers. You have the polar, subpolar lows and polar highs, subtropical highs on both, uh, in both hemispheres. And we didn't talk about the zonal contrast in the tropics. We have been looking at the so-called aqua planet that I mentioned as an idealized situation. But we'll see a little bit later on that actually 
when you go along longitudes even in the tropics the conditions are not uniform this is where the ocean becomes very important it turns out that if you think about the Pacific for example around the Galapagos temperatures are very cold 20 to 22 23 degrees centigrade which is makes for a very rich biodiversity over the Galapagos but if you go west towards New Guinea you have very warm temperatures a lot of rain and you have corals right the Great Barrier Reef and so on you have rainforests over Indonesia Borneo and so on a lot of rain so this is something we will come back to that even though we have been talking a lot about the zonal mean meridional uh, kind of profiles and uh, cells etc the zonal contrasts are actually very important and they play a big big role and we will also see an animation where this map that's shown of pressure centers and winds for example as the sun moves north and south these pressure centers become very large and very small so there is a seasonality of the entire system that's going to respond to the energy being received from the sun and remember the sun is moving into a hemisphere going north and going south so essentially six months in one hemisphere six months in the other hemisphere and you have the ocean soaking up the heat in uh, one period of six months giving up heat in the other six months because it has high heat capacity and because it has seeking, sinking water and this very deep ocean it can keep heat for a long time and release it back slowly so even though you have mainly the sun going up and down on a daily time scale and sun going north and south on a seasonal time scale you can have climate changing on very long time scales on multiple years multiple decades even multiple centuries because ocean can take up heat and release heat on very slow time scales plus you can build glaciers on continent on very long time scales so that's where the multiple time scales in the climate come from so we'll look at an animation next but first uh, we will just uh, mention again this idealized three cell model idealized because we haven't considered all the complex physics that happens as you move from very high angular momentum in the deep tropics to higher latitudes instabilities develop an air parcel cannot directly reach the poles it becomes uh, unstable and so on and so forth so in reality the complexity comes from tilt of the earth's axis and the seasons lower heat capacity of the continents and uh, compared to the seawater so the asymmetry of across the equator also then matters because you have more continents in the northern hemisphere than in the southern hemisphere so the land distribution is uneven so this uh, animation I'll do as a separate podcast because it's got some very interesting and very useful information and it's worth staring at it multiple times so just digest these concepts and then we'll look at that animation in a minute.